The United Nations is this week observing the International Day of UN Peacekeepers, which officially falls on May the 29th, marking the 75th anniversary of peacekeeping in the global organization. Since 1948, more than 2 million peacekeepers from 125 countries have since served in 71 operations around the world. Currently, 87,000 women and men are serving in 12 conflict zones across Africa, Asia, Europe and the Middle East. To mark the occasion, the SABC's Sherwin Bryce piece sat down with the UN Head of uh, Peace Operations under Secretary General Jean-Pierre Lacroix for a deep dive into some of the most complex operations currently underway in Africa. Here now is a part of that discussion. The challenges are peacekeepers make a huge difference every single day. I will give you two examples. One is uh, the preservation of ceasefires, the prevention of resumption of hostilities. For example, in southern Lebanon, when we have uh, this operation called Unifil, and where every day you have small incidents that could easily escalate into potentially a resumption of hostilities. The second example is protection of civilians. Every single day we have uh, our peacekeepers are protecting hundreds of thousands of civilians. Uh, again, another example, uh, in the DR Congo, in spite of all the challenges, a very difficult situation in that country, we have uh, uh, IDP camps, some of them with tens of thousands of civilians. I visited one in Ituri province with more than 40,000 IDPs, internally displaced persons, right. totally protected by our peacekeepers. Now, the challenges are real, of course, but I think it needs to be highlighted uh, that uh, our peacekeepers are making this uh, tremendous difference every single day. Despite what you say, USG, I would argue that we often don't hear about these successes of UN peacekeeping. It only seems to make news when a convoy is attacked, when peacekeepers are killed, or when protesters in country are demanding <coughs> the exit of UN peacekeepers, as we have seen in places like the DRC in Mali and the Central African Republic, to mention a few. One increasingly gets a sense that UN peacekeepers are not always welcome in the places where they operate due to perceptions around efficiencies or if efficacy. What is your analysis of, of, of those, those sentiments? Right. Well, I think, um, first of all, when you talk about the perception of the population, uh, yes, there is and there can be frustrations uh, resulting from the uh, discrepancy between the expectations, particularly the expectations resulting from our protection of civilian mandate and what our peacekeeping operations can achieve. However, uh, when I visit these uh, places where our peacekeepers are active, uh, like, for example, recently in Gao in Mali uh, or uh, in the DRC in uh, Ituri province or in uh, South Kivu, uh, we, we, are, uh, we see expression of gratitude by the population. The question is, how can we do better and how can uh, we better meet the expectations, particularly uh, resulting from this protection of civilian mandates? Right. I'm glad you mentioned mandates, right? UN peace operations are based on mandates that are handed mm. down by the UN Security Council. Their success or failures often stem from dynamics on the ground, shifting political dynamics, insecurity fueled by asymmetric warfare, as we see in Mali and the DRC. Are missions being given mandates that they simply cannot fulfill? I believe that there is a discrepancy between the mandates that were being given and the resources. Uh, that are provided to our peacekeeping mission. Let me just give you one example. When the mandate of our mission in Mali, MINUSMA, was extended to the center of that country, uh, the mission was not given any additional capacities and we kept telling the members of the Security Council since then, this is a mission that is under capacitated relative to the mandate that it was given, that yes, there is a responsibility of the member states to provide those missions with adequate capacities.